Hi everyone, in this video we'll be going over A-Level Accounting 2022 October November Paper 2 1 Question Number 2. This is the structured paper 2 which consists of 4 questions, 2 of 30 marks and 2 of 15 marks and we are also given a time limit of 1 hour and 30 minutes. And since this question number 1 is of 30 marks, ideally we should be spending about 30 minutes in order to complete this question and in this video as well we will be attempting to solve this question under 30 minutes. So without any further delay, let's get started. The directors of Y Limited have provided the following balances at 30 June 2022. Okay, let's have a look at our information. Then we're also given the additional information. Let's have a look at our question first. We need to prepare the income statement for the year ended 30 June 2022. Okay, we're already given the headings. So we just need to figure out the amounts for these headings and put it in our income statement. So the very first one is revenue. Let's start with that. Let's have a look above. We can see that the amount for revenue is given right here to be 615,300. Now we also need to check our additional information to see if there needs any adjustment to this amount. Let's have a look. We can see that our inventory at 30 June 2022. So this is basically our closing inventory value of 126,800. Then we're told that inventory at 30 June 2022 included damaged goods costing 3,200 that could be sold for 3,950 after repairs costing 910. Again, this is something related to our inventory. And this needs to be adjusted in our closing inventory value, right? So let's do that. We start with our value of 126,800. Then we're told that out of these goods, the damaged goods costing 3,200. So damaged goods value should always be subtracted from our closing inventory. So I'm just going to subtract the value of 3,200. And we're told that it could now be sold for 3,950 after repairs costing 910. And the next step would be to add the value that the damaged goods could be sold for. So I'm just going to add the value of 3,950. And we also need to subtract the repairs cost, right? Because these are the costs. So that's minus 910. So this gives the adjusted closing inventory value to be 126,640. Then we are given the estimated value at 30 June 2022 of the delivery vehicles. This does not concern our revenue. Office equipment is to be depreciated at 10% per annum using the reducing balance method. This is to be included in our expenses. So I'm just going to skip it for now. Then we have administrative expenses which included 1800 office rent. Again, these are the expenses. So I'm just going to ignore it for now. We have distribution cost, which is again an expense. 6% debenture, which uh, we required in order to calculate our interest charges. Irrecoverable debt, which is again a part of our expense. Then we have provision for doubtful debts, which is also a part of expense. Then there is no interest charge on the bank overdraft. Okay, so this does not include any of our items to be adjusted in revenue let's see if we have return inwards because that could mean that the sold goods are returned and in our income statement we only mention our net sales value which is the difference between revenue and the return inwards okay we can see that our return inwards is right here so let's figure out the revenue value to be included in our income statement that is just going to be 615,300 minus our return inwards value of 7550 which results in the net sales value to be 607,750. So this is the amount to be included in our revenue in the income statement. Let's do that. That is 607,750. Then the next step is our cost of sales. Okay, so the formula for cost of sales is we add our opening inventory, we add all of our purchases, we subtract all of our purchases returns, then we subtract all of our closing inventory and we also add all of our carriage inwards. Let's do that. Let's start with our opening inventory. We can see that the inventory value at 1st July 2021, which is the opening date, is given to be 105,600. This is going to be the opening inventory. Let's write it down. Then we need to add our purchases. Let's see. We have purchases right here with the value of 338,200 so that's 338,200 then we need to subtract if there is any sort of purchases returns that is basically return outwards let's see so we're not given any sort of return outwards which means that our purchases returns is zero then we need to subtract the closing inventory which we figured out right here we adjusted the damaged goods value and figured out the new closing inventory value to be 126,640. Let's write it down. That will be 100 and 
26,640. And the next step is to add our carriage inwards. And carriage inwards is again given right here, so we should be adding this amount of 4,310. And this gives the value of our cost of sales to be 321,470. This is the amount that we should be including in our income statement. Let's do that. That is 321,470. And remember that cost of sales should be subtracted from our revenue, so I'm just going to put it in a bracket. Now the next step would be to figure out our gross profit, which is just the difference between these two values, revenue and cost of sales. In this case, that's 607,750 minus 321,470, which results in the value of 286,280. All right, so the next one is to calculate our administrative expenses. Let's have a look above. Okay, we can start with this amount given right here under the heading of administrative expenses. That's 89,540. Now, information regarding expenses were given in the additional information section. Let's have a look there. We've already utilized information one and two. Then for the third information, we're told that the delivery vehicles and any expenses relating to delivery vehicles will be a part of our selling and distribution costs, right? So this should not be included in our administrative expenses. We can just exclude it for now. Then we have office equipment, which will be a part of our office and administrative expenses, right? And we are told that the depreciation is at 10% per annum using the reducing balance method. So we need to add its depreciation to our administrative expenses. Let's figure it out. We're told that the depreciation method is reducing balance, which means that we need to charge our depreciation to the net book value, right? So depreciation for office equipment, let's figure out our net book value. That is the difference between cost and provision for depreciation. In this case, that's 54,600, which is the cost, minus the provision for depreciation, which is 22,300. And our rate of depreciation is 10%. So we're just going to multiply it by 10%, which you can write down as 0 0.10. This gives the depreciation to be charged for office equipment to have the value of 3,230. And this amount should be added in our administrative expenses. So I'm just going to add this amount of 3,230. All right, now let's have a look at another information. We're done with information four. Now the fifth one states that administrative expenses included 1800 office rent for the three months ending 31st August 2022. So this relates to the month for August and this is the last month, right? So this amount will also cover the two months before August. So the three months is going to be June, July and August, right? And if you look at our closing date, that is 30 June 2022. But we're also including the expenses for the month of July and August. This is the prepayment, which should be excluded in this year's income statement, right? So let's figure out the office rent for these two months. For three months, we have the rent of 1800 For one month, that's going to be 1800 by 3. This is just a unitary method. Now for the two months, the rent is going to be 1800 by 3 times 2, which results in 1200 and this 1200 is the prepayment for next financial period, which should not be included. So we should exclude this from our administrative expenses. Let's subtract it. That is going to be minus 1200. Now the next adjustment we need to make will be, this is the distribution cost, which should be included in distribution costs and not the administrative expenses. So I'm just going to exclude it for now. Then for seventh one, we have debenture, which will be a part of finance charges. So we can just ignore it for now. Then we have an irrecoverable debt of 490 is to be written off to administrative expenses, which means that this amount of 490 should be included in our administrative expenses. So let's add it. That is going to be plus 490. Okay. Then we included this as well. We have provision for doubtful debts is to be maintained at 4% of trade receivables. And remember that we need to figure out the provision for doubtful debts for this year and compare it with that of last year in order to see whether there is an increase or a decrease. And if there is an increase, we treat it as an expense and we include it in our administrative expenses. But if there is a decrease, it would be treated as an income, right? So let's figure out our amount on which the provision for doubtful debts is to be charged. That is just going to be the amount for trade receivables minus our irrecoverable debt. In this case, that is 93,240 minus the irrecoverable debt was a 490, 
right? And we can just multiply it with our rate of provision for doubtful debts, which was given to be 4%. So we can write it down as 0 0.04. And this gives the provision for doubtful debts for the year ended 30 June 2022 to have the value of 3710. Okay, let's see if we are given the previous year's provision for doubtful debts. It is right here. And that amounted to 3540. We can see that the amount has increased for this year, which means that this increment should be included as an expense in our administrative expenses. Let's figure out the increment. That is just the difference between these two amounts. That's 3710 for this year minus the amount of 3540 for last year. And this increment is of 170, which should be included in our administrative expenses. Let's add it. That's plus 170. Okay, let's see if we have any other things to be included. Okay, this concludes everything, which means that the total of these five amounts is going to be the total of administrative expenses to be included in our income statement. And the total is 92,230. Let's include this. That is 92,230. And remember that administrative expenses is to be subtracted in order to figure out the profit. So I'm just going to write it down in a bracket. Now the next step would be to figure out our distribution costs. Let's have a look above. So we can start with our initial distribution cost, which is given right here, to be 72,910. Okay, I'm just going to write it here. Now we need to make adjustments to this amount, right? Because we were given additional information. We can see that this concerned delivery vehicles, which is a part of distribution cost. It had an estimated value at 30 June 2022 of 62,000. This just means that it is the net book value, right? At the date of 30 June 2022. And previously, the delivery vehicles had a value of 74,000. So the difference between the value of last year and this year just acts as our depreciation, which should be included as an expense in our income statement, right? Let's figure out the difference between the value for delivery vehicles. Previously, we had the value of 74,000. And now the value at the ending date of 30 June 2022 is of 62,000. Let's write it down. So the difference between these two amounts is just going to act as a depreciation for delivery vehicles and it is of 12,000. This amount should be treated as an expense in our distribution cost. So I'm just going to add it to this amount of 72,910. Okay, now we've completed this one. Then we're also told that distribution costs of 850 were owing at 30 June 2022. Owing just means that these are the expenses for this year that we have not paid yet, which means that this should also be included as an expense in our income statement, right? So I'm just going to add this amount of 850. That is plus 850. Then the next one we have is debenture. That is a part of finance cost and bank of drafts so that also does not concern our distribution cost which means that these three amounts are the total for our distribution cost and the total of these three amounts is going to be 85,760 this is the amount that we need to include in our income statement under the heading of distribution cost let's do that that's 85,760 and again, the distribution costs are an expense which should be subtracted in order to figure out the profit. So I'm just going to write it down in a bracket. Now, in order to figure out profit from operations, we just need to subtract our administrative expenses and distribution costs from the gross profit. In this case, that is going to be 286,280 minus 92,230 minus 85,760, which results in our profit from operations to have the value of 108,290. Okay, now the next step is to figure out the finance cost, which is basically the interest charges, right? And we're given 6% debentures, which needs to be repaid in the year 2025 and 26 were issued in the year 2017, which means that full year's depreciation will be charged for the year ended 30 June 2022. Let's figure out the interest. Okay, so the debenture amount is 60,000 and in order to figure out the interest we just multiply the rate to the total debenture amount in this case that will be 60,000 times the rate of 6% which we can write down as 0 0.06 which results in the value of 3600. 
okay this should be included in our finance chart let's see if we have any other items to be included there okay we included this and we are told that there is no interest charge on the bank overdraft which means that the only finance charge we have is the interest charge on our debenture so we can just include the interest that we just figured out to be 3600 as our finance charge in the income statement let's do that that is 3600 again finance cost is something that needs to be subtracted in order to figure out the profit for the year so i'm just going to write it down in a bracket now we can easily figure out the profit for the year by subtracting our finance cost from profit from operations in this case that is 108,290 minus 3600 which results in the value of 104,690 this concludes our income statement now we were given the working section right here okay so instead of scribbling all of the question people like i did you guys should be showing all of your workings for cost of sales administrative expenses and distribution costs in this particular box so that you get your markings correctly now let's move towards the next part for the second part we need to prepare the statement of financial position at 30 june 2022 okay let's prepare it we start with our non-current assets section let's have a look above we can see that our non-current assets were delivery vehicles and office equipment right these are the only two non-current assets we have let's write down its headings so we have delivery vehicles and office equipment okay remember that the non-current assets are recorded at its net book value in the statement of financial position right and we were told that the value at the ending date of 30 june 2022 for delivery vehicle was 62,000. so this is basically the net book value which should be included in our statement of financial position let's write it down that is going to be 62,000. now for office equipment we were given the cost and accumulated depreciation and we also figured out the depreciation charge for the year right so in order to figure out the net book value we just need to subtract the provision for depreciation from the cost and in this case the cost is 54,600. the depreciation or provision for depreciation till the beginning of the year was 22,300. and now we also need to subtract the depreciation charge for this year right which we figured out to be 3230 now this gives the netbook value of office equipment to be included in the statement of financial position to have the value of 29,070. Let's write it down. That's 29,070. This concludes the non-current asset section. So let's figure out the total for it. That's the sum of these two values, 62,000 plus 29,070, which results in 91,070. Okay, so the next section is going to be that of current assets. Let's have a look above. So the very first current asset will be our closing inventory, right? Then we have our trade receivables. That is also part of current assets. Then let's see. We have bank balance, but it is an overdraft. So this is a negative bank balance, which results in a current liability. Okay. And we also made a prepayment, right? Prepayment of expenses because this is the office rent, right? Prepayment of expenses basically means that we have already paid for it, but we are yet to receive the benefits for those expenses, right? Which means that this is also some sort of receivables, which should be included in our current assets. So the items that we will include is closing inventory, and trade and other receivables let's write it down that will be closing inventory and trade and other receivables so we already have our value for closing inventory let's have a look that was 126,640. Let's write it down. So that's 126,640. Now for trade and other receivables, we need to figure out its amount. 
we have our total trade receivables of 93,240, right? So I'm just going to write it right here, 93,240. Then we had bad debt of 490, which should not be included in our statement of financial position, right? So I'm just going to subtract that amount of 490. And we also figured out the provision for doubtful debts, right? And while including the trade receivables value in our statement of financial position, we should also exclude this provision for doubtful debts which means that we should subtract the amount for provision for doubtful debts for this particular year and we figured out to be 3710 right so let's just subtract this now this will give our total trade receivables but we're also including other receivables which is the prepayment of office rent right so let's add the prepayment for these two months of july and august that we figured out to be 1200 so that's plus 1200 now this gives the total trade and other receivables value to be included in our statement of financial position to be 90,240. Let's write it down. That's 90,240 and this concludes our current assets section. So let's figure out the total for this section. That's the sum of these two values, 126,640 plus 90,240, which results in 216,880. Now we can figure out our total assets value as well. And total assets is just the sum of non-current assets and current assets. And in this case, that's going to be 91,070 plus 216,880, which results in the value of 307,950. This concludes our assets section. Now we can move towards our equity and liabilities section. Okay, first of all, we can start with our equity. Let's have a look above. Our equity includes the ordinary share capital of 80,000. Let's write it down. That's the share capital of 80,000. And this value does not change because we're not told that there was new issuance of shares, right? So it is going to remain constant. Then the next item to be included will be the retained earnings, right? It has the value of 16920 at the opening date. But at the closing date, this is also going to include our profit for this year, right? So let's adjust it. We have the opening balance of 16920 Then we need to add the profit for the year that we just figured out, which was 104690 Let's add it. That's 104690 and if you remember our statement of retained earnings correctly, then we also remember that we need to subtract all of our dividends paid for this year from the retained earnings, right? So let's have a look above to see if there was any dividends paid. Okay, we can see right here that dividends were paid amounting to 6400 So this should be subtracted in order to figure out the closing balance for our retained earnings. So that's minus 6400 now, this gives the value of retained earnings to be included in our statement of financial position to have the amount of 115,210. Let's write it down. That will be our retained earnings with the value of 115,210. Let's see if there is any more items to be included in our equity section. Okay, I think that concludes everything. So we can just figure out the total for the equity section and then move towards our non-current liabilities section. So the total is going to be the sum of these two amounts. That's 80,000 plus 115,210, which results in 195,210. Now for our non-current liabilities... Again, let's have a look above. Our only non-current liability is our 6% debenture, right? And that amounts to 60,000, so let's write it down. That's 6% debentures, which should be repaid in the year 2025 to 26, which amounted to 60,000. So this concludes our non-current liabilities section. We can now move towards the current liabilities section.
again let's have a look above to see the items that needs to be included first of all we had bank overdraft amounting to 1440 so let's include this in our statement of financial position because bank overdraft is the negative bank balance which we should pay to the bank right and it had the amount of 1440 okay now the next thing to be included as part of our current liability is going to be trade payables with the amount of 48650 but we also know that there were other payables because distribution cost of 850 were owing which means that we were yet to pay this amount which acts as our payables so this amount should also be included as part of our payables and let's see if there are any other things okay we already included this finance cost okay we're told that the finance cost paid for this year amounted to 1800 but if we take a look at our income statement we can see that the total finance cost was 3600 so out of 3600 only 1800 had been paid and the remaining balance which is 3600 minus 1800 which results in 1800 were yet to be paid so this is also a payable which should be included as our current liabilities in the statement of financial position right so the total for trade payables and other payables let's figure it out we have the initial amount of 48650 then we have our distribution cost owing of 850 so that's plus 850 and we also have our finance cost owing of 1800 now this results in the total trade and other payables to have the amount of 51300 and this is the amount to be included in our statement of financial position. So let's include it. That will be trade and other payables with the amount of 51,300. And this concludes our current liabilities section. So let's figure out the total by adding these two amounts. That's 1440 plus 51,300, which results in 52,740. Now we can figure out the total equity and liabilities. This is just going to be the sum of total equity plus non-current liabilities plus current liabilities, which in this case is 195,210 plus 60,000 plus 52,740, which results in the amount of 307,950. Now, in order to check whether our statement of financial position is correct or not, we just um, compare our total assets value with that of total equity and liability. We can see that the total assets is 307,950. And the total equity and liabilities also has the same balance, which means that our statement of financial position is correct. So this concludes the second part of this question. We can now move towards the third one. We're given additional information. The directors of Y Limited wish to repay the 6% debenture, which is to be paid in the year 2025 to 26 early. They are considering making a rights issue of one ordinary share for every two shares held at a premium of 50%. Okay, now we need to advise the directors whether or not they should make a rights issue of ordinary shares to repay the debentures. So the first thing that we need to see is whether this rights issue would suffice the balance of our 6% debenture, right? And we are told that for every two shares held, we're providing one ordinary share. So for every two ordinary share, we're providing one right share, which means that for one ordinary share, we'll be providing one by two right share. Let's figure out the total number of ordinary shares that we have currently. We can see that the total value is 80,000 and the nominal rate is 1. So in order to figure out the number of shares, we just need to divide the total value by its nominal rate. In this case, that will be 80,000 by 1, which again results in 80,000, which means that we currently have 80,000 ordinary shares. Now, the number of right shares for 80,000 ordinary shares is just going to be... 80,000 ordinary shares that will be 1 by 2 times 80,000 right shares which means we will be providing or issuing 40,000 right shares and we are told that we will be issuing it at a premium of 50% so our nominal rate is 1 so this is the ordinary share value so the share premium value will be 1 times 50% which is 0 0.50 so that's 0 0.50 now the total value per share 
for this new rights issue is going to be 1 plus 0 0.50 which results in 1.5 now let's figure out the total value raised by our right share that is going to be the number of right shares which we just figured out to be 40,000 times the rate which is 1.5 now this results in the amount of 60,000 and let's have a look at our debenture value which is again 60,000 so this just means that the rights issue would raise 60,000 required to repay the debenture right let's write it down the rights issue would raise the 60,000 required to repay the debenture but the rights issue will only be able to raise this 60,000 if it is fully subscribed right so that is still a question let's write it down would rights issue be fully subscribed And if we were to repay our debentures back, that would mean that we no longer would be required to pay the interest, right? Let's write it down. Would avoid payment of interest. And if we do not have to pay the interest amount, that would mean that our profit for the year will be increased by that interest amount. So let's have a look above. The total interest that we paid on our debenture was 3600 so now if we were to repay back that six percent debenture it would mean that our profit for the year will be increased by 3600 let's write it down as well repayment would increase profit for the year by 3600 but we are paying this debenture early right we are currently at the year 2022 and it is to be paid in the year 2025 which means that we still have another three years let's write it down as well debenture is not repayable for another Three years now based on these factors we need to advise the directors whether or not they should make a rights issue of ordinary shares to repay the debentures so we can clearly see that it is not repayable for another three years which means that we could still utilize that finance of 60,000 in our company and the interest charge for the debenture is 3600 which is comparatively low if we compare it with our total profits for the year so I would suggest or advise the directors to not make a rights issue of ordinary shares to repay the debentures. Let's write down the decision clearly. The directors should not make a rights issue of ordinary shares. To repay the debentures all right this concludes the third part as well as this entire question number one of 2022 october november paper 2 one if you found this video useful make sure you like the video and leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss any of these videos in the future thank you